Full transparency, Maker actually sent me the cover area for this project. But honestly, I've actually been eyeing this since their Kickstarter, so I was more than happy to accept it. They gave me full freedom to share my thoughts, so all my opinions are of my own. With that said, back to unboxing. So this is one beast of a machine and the quality is actually a lot more stronger than I thought it'd be. It's like 100 degrees in my garage. So let's go upstairs and talk about the machine as well as the designs and then we'll come back later to finish the install. This is my first CNC machine. As a maker, I love getting new tools because it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. So what is a CNC machine? CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. And the main difference between CNC and 3D printing is subtractive versus additive manufacturing. CNC mills away at materials such as aluminum, wood, or plastic, while 3D printing adds layer by layer. Now I'm not gonna go into the details or the specs of this machine, simply because I'm not an expert and this isn't a product review video. I want this video to be how I envision CNC machine fitting into my workflow. But I will tell you my top two reasons why I've been wanting a CNC machine. First, in some cases, it's just a lot faster especially when the shape is large and just a simple geometric shape, such as a shelf or a lid. It's much quicker for CNC to subtract it from a block of wood than it is for 3D printing to create a block of plastic. And the second reason is because I'm so excited to work with wood and aluminum. And I think if you find a way to pair it with 3D printing, it'll take it to a whole new level. My dream is to eventually create my own product line and I feel like this is a step in the right direction. Now, what are the negatives of CNC? You have this machine that's just chiseling away at material and you pair that with a dust collector and an air compressor, it's gonna make some noise. Second reason is you can't leave it unattended like you can with 3D printing. They can generate so much heat and cause sparks, and you combine that with all the dust and debris, it could cause a fire. All right, now that we got the brief intro out of the way, I wanna dive into the game plan. Because this is my first time using a CNC machine, I wanna keep it pretty simple. I wanna start off basically on a two-dimensional plane. So I'm just gonna be cutting aluminum. I was recently in New York and I saw this wall light that I really liked and I think it would be a good starter project. And because I'm a visual learner, let's start designing in CAD. By CAD, I mean this. Sometimes when I'm dealing with two-dimensional objects, I'll often use cardboard. And this really just helps me have something really tangible to deal with. Or sometimes I would even use note cards because sometimes these are just easier to cut. But for this example, I think it'll be fun to use cardboard. We know that our lamp has four sides. So I'm guessing that there's slits halfway through on some of these. So let's cut it and talk about it. Now I'm guessing they join something like this. But looking at this now, I don't think all of them have the same slits in the same spot. Because if all sides had the same exact orientation of the slots, the front face would actually just slide off. So I'm guessing that these two pieces are actually alternating the slits on both sides. This way it actually interlocks all the pieces. Now we have our front and back piece and our side pieces. Let's see how it looks. I know, this looks super janky. But the point of this is that it's fast and easy to prototype. Sometimes doing something like this can be a lot faster than doing something in a software. Now that I have a better idea about how everything connects and a better idea of the concept, I can now go into the actual CAD and have a little more confidence designing it. And talking about other things that are rougher on the edges, all the projects in today's video most likely will not be very refined. And I think that's okay. I actually heard something in an interview with Tyler the Creator, and he said something that really resonated with me. He said, create like a child and edit like a scientist. And he was talking about when he creates music, he creates so many different versions of them and he just lets it all out. It's not until the end does he go back and really edit all the music. And I think this is what we should do as makers, especially when we're learning a new tool. So for this video, I'm honestly not sure where it's gonna go, but 
but I'm hoping that I can take all these learnings and build upon it for future videos. And then we'll edit like crazy scientists and make something beautiful. And we'll start with this lamp. Quick change of plans. Instead of doing the aluminum lamp first, I think I want to start on wood because wood is softer and a little more forgiving and I don't want to break a trail bit right now. I need somewhere to put my wedding ring, so I'm going to do a small bowl. Let's see how it works out. Honestly, for first print, not bad. Not print, I mean, uh, machine. Machine, CNC, you can see the little knot there. I like it, it's kind of quirky. And the tab did really well. I think I can just pop it off. Nice, look at that. All right, I'm gonna sand it down a little bit and then we'll take a look. I'm pretty happy with the way this box turned out. And because it was so simple, it really set us up for success. And I think it's very important when you're starting off with new tools, or learning something new in general, that's really important to have these small wins at the beginning to build confidence. Because the more complex it is, the more likely you are to fail. Because that can really knock you down and make you less confident and frustrated. So let's take a closer look at this. I actually thought about putting some edge band, but I absolutely love these layer lines, not layer lines. I absolutely love these layers. So while I was machining this box, I was actually 3D printing a small insert to put inside of it. And now we can just combine them. Oh, nice. It's perfect. There's nothing special about either of these designs, but somehow when put together, it kind of elevates it. I know the wood can use more sanding and probably a little more finesse, but for a first attempt, I'm pretty happy with this. So I didn't stop there. I wanted to create an inverted version of this, one where the inside is wood, and the outside is PLA. But I don't want to make them quite the same. I want to take advantage of the abilities that 3D printing has. So while it's printing the container, I actually want to pause the print and put this in. And then I will have 3D print and close it. Kind of like how we do with magnets. There's no real reason why I'm doing this besides the fact that it's something I want to try. And I'm hoping that this kind of exploration will lead to other inspirations. So let's start the print and then plop this in. So pausing the print and putting the wood inside the container worked out really well. And it went a lot smoother than I thought it would. I don't know how practical it is, but it's really cool. I also made this in the shape of a Grifinity. And my goal was actually to do the same for this. Maybe if I have time later. But I actually really like this and I don't want to ruin it. Now that we've got a couple of products under our belt, let's scale it up a little more. Let's try a larger piece. This is what I was making. YouTube doesn't give out plaques for 10,000, but honestly, to me, this is a huge milestone. So I just want to say thank you to everyone for all the support. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please like, comment, or subscribe. It really helps me out. But let's talk about this. This actually only took maybe 17 minutes, and this was all from a 2D image. The inside here is just a pocket. Then I used the laser engraver for the play button and the text. I didn't film the laser engraving because I'm afraid that the laser is gonna refract and ruin my camera. That's so cool. Uh, what else should we make? We gotta try this, right? I already have the step file and we haven't tried pocket holes yet. So I'm guessing we can make a cavity and then we can use the pocket drill for the screws. I'm less worried about the micro USB I could flip it on its side and then do another pocket hole, but I think I'm gonna just use my drill for that because I'm lazy. And come on, a wooden case? That'd be kind of cool. I think eventually I want to try aluminum, but let's do wood first. It 
absolutely blows my mind that I have almost zero experience with CNC and I'm able to do this using a model that I already have from a previous project. Surprising thing is this only took about 30 minutes, which is really interesting because this tiny bowl that I had to mill, this took about an hour. And the main difference is because I want it to be smooth, I did very small step downs and step downs is almost equivalent to layer lines in 3D printing. The smaller it is, the more fine detail it will be. And so I did a really small step down to make this really smooth. For this, on the other hand, I don't need small step downs for it to be really detailed. Let's put it together and see what it looks like. All right, I fixed it. If you imagine a coloring book with images and it has solid lines around it, and you were to cut around that shape, do you include the lines or do you cut inside the lines? And I think I selected the wrong option. And I think I should have said cut outside the lines. That's way it cuts around the object. So definitely my fault. I had to use a box cutter in ways it should not be used, but I still have all my fingers and it worked. So after doing a few projects with wood, I think we're ready to finally do the lamp. So let's go machine it. This turned out so perfectly. I did have to change a few things. I had to scale it down and I also had to use a thinner material. This is because when I originally used a five millimeter, it took like an hour just to cut one piece and thicker aluminum just costs a lot. And so I wanted to scale it down. But the issue that occurred when I used a thinner material is that this material is actually 1.6 millimeters thick. And the smallest drill bit I have is actually two millimeters. So it's a little loose and now it's having a rave. So I was originally going to share this design, but last night I actually randomly decided to do a reverse image search of this lamp. It turns out it's made by a studio called Luft Tanaka Studio. I'm not the type of person to steal other person's designs, so I'm not going to share it. But I think it's fun and educational to kind of reverse engineer things that we really appreciate. And I think this is such a beautiful and well-designed piece. And I hope that this exposes people to learn about Luft Tanaka Studio. So please don't get mad at Luft Tanaka. But now that we've done a few aluminum pieces, I want to see how we can integrate it with 3D printing. And I actually found a couple of designs online that I really liked. This desk clock is an example of how I imagined I can use a CNC machine to elevate 3D printing. I found this 3D print online and it was created by Abstractia Design. And I'll be sure to add the demo link below. The original model is already very beautifully designed. But honestly, to me, I always felt like 3D printing can take you 90% of the way there. And if you already created the model, you can easily use that same model to CNC. I just imported this model into the CAM software and was able to mill it very quickly. And remember, this is all just preference and this is just my own taste and style. And you may prefer the original and that's perfectly fine. But to me, this feels almost manufactured and as if I bought this at the store. And it's kind of what I'm stepping towards as I try to figure out how to design my own products. So let's look at one more example. The next example I have is a sticky note holder with templates. And this design was created by Jorm and their link is also in the description below. You put the sticky pads up here and it comes with these templates that you can use for the various reasons that they have. And you can conveniently store the templates inside. And when I saw these templates, I immediately thought about how easy it would be to make these out of aluminum. And here they are. And it was so easy just to drop the original designs into the CAM software and create these. And this is exactly why I love combining 3D printing and CNC. It's not that one is replacing the other, but it's really about the strength of each to push your design further. And there's one more final design I want to show. So the next thing I made was this. Someone actually kindly pointed out that I wasn't saying it correctly. It's not Scatis, it's Score this. I was way off. If you didn't see my last video, I created this Mac mini rack and I wanted to create a quick version of what it could potentially look like. So I printed these as the uprights. They're obviously way thinner than what I would like them to be, but it was cheaper and this is just a prototype. 
Now for the beams, I've been really obsessed with this technique of 3D printing. This is really quick and easy to do when you're printing something flat. You can actually print it with zero top layers and zero bottom layers, and this is just entirely infill. So you get this really cool pattern. This was done with 25% gyroid infill, and it's perfect in the case of a Mac Mini rack because it provides excellent ventilation. Great feedback I got for this one was when you're installing multiple rows, it's really hard to insert the pegs as you go up. So I thought a better approach would actually be able to use T-clips. And the way you do this is you just poke it through, you line it up, and then you just twist to lock it. <laughs> Look at that. It's actually way more stable with the tape clips. I also ran out of filament, that's why it's orange, but it's kind of a cool accent. So we'll pretend that I did it intentionally. That's pretty sick. And this was just a very lazy and quick way of doing it. But I know a lot of people in the last video commented about mini home labs, and it's actually a series that I kind of want to do. And this is just a glimpse at it. When I started this video, I said this wasn't going to be a project review video, and I really didn't want it to be. So I'm going to call a section Reflection. When I first received the CNC machine, I really didn't know what to expect. And honestly, it was very hard for me to get started in the very beginning. First reason was because simply, I was intimidated. My main background was 3D printing, and I had zero experience in CNC. Second reason is I didn't have all the necessary tools I needed for a CNC machine. And I had to do a lot of research because I wanted a really quiet shop vac as well as an air compressor. But right when I bought those things, I later realized I was missing a hose or an adapter. So I would have to wait for those to be delivered. And also all the materials such as wood and aluminum, I paid with my own money. I went to Home Depot, I went to Lowe's, I bought stuff off Amazon. And there was a lot of learning curve in dealing with each of those. And I made several mistakes on the way. And this isn't a paid sponsor video. And this is my honest opinion of the Carver Air. It was a lot of fun. I actually didn't expect myself to enjoy this as much as I did. And that's kind of why I overdid it and created so many different projects. I honestly didn't expect to or want to create that many for this one video. It's just that when I started on one project, I was already building enough confidence to start on the next one. And before I even finished that one, I already had an idea of another one, which is crazy because I haven't even touched the fourth axis that they sent me. Is this machine perfect? Absolutely not. The thing I looked at the most was the hardware and the machine itself. And it's really good quality. The software on the other hand is super buggy. It crashed on me multiple times. It was slow, it would freeze, but it was free and easy. Just like Perusa has their slicer and Bamboo has their slicer, Carver has its own slicer cam software where you can select the bits and just like you select filaments that have its own preset speed and temperature, for their bits, it already has the set plunge rate, step down, spindle speed, which made it super easy. And I didn't break a single bit using the default settings. And my philosophy is even though the software is bad, they can always easily push new updates. If the hardware is bad, they can't really change that easily. So I guess the ultimate question is, would I have bought this with my own money? I would have. I think it's a great beginner CNC machine because I'm a beginner and yet I made all these. So if you're wondering about if you should get a CNC machine, definitely do your research. But for the Carveria Air, I'd say it's a viable option. Now I'm actually really excited about how I can build my future projects. I know these weren't the most complicating projects, but I hope you enjoyed learning about my design process. If you haven't yet, please like and comment and let me know what you think. So thanks again for watching and keep making stuff.